All right. Hi. Um, I'm Kathleen. Um, uh, just a bit of intro. I founded a small library and co-working space in Surabaya in 2008. Um, but I, for a living, I also work as a researcher in Institute of Southeast Asian Studies in Singapore since 2013. Um, my recent papers are on digital payments, digitalization in libraries and archives, e-commerce in Indonesia. I also wrote on youth underemployment, uh, precarity and creative economy, suppression of 1965-1966 mass killings in Indonesia. And uh, I'm self-taught in web design and development, so I'm a bit, uh, I'm a tourist in this. So uh, maybe it's a bit related to what we had um, discussion recently. Oh so, yeah, I'm a bit of everywhere. <laughs> Um, just a bit of overview of Indonesia. How many of you have ever been to Indonesia? Okay, so, well, very big, uh, the biggest archipelago in the world, technically. Um, we have um, uh, recognized 13,000 islands, um, about, about almost 1,000 inhabited. Um, and this is a heat map of the recent election uh, in 2014. And you can see how the, the level of inequality of infrastructure in Indonesia. So the heat map is all concentrated in Java Island. And if you zoom in the heat map, you will see it's very focused on Jakarta. As you hear in a number of presentations, um, Jakarta make up a lot of tweets in the world. But even if you move to the East Java, where I'm based, it's not really, really that much. So this is just give you some idea about how, how unequal Indonesia is. And this is internet penetration scale. Um, in some countries in Southeast Asia, you can see Indonesia doesn't make much scale in uh, the past 15 years. Whereas you see Singapore, this is quite an anomaly in Southeast Asia. And um, if you look at the uh, subscription, number of uh, subscription of users, you will see uh, that the number of um, phone subscription have dipped but the number of mobile have increased exponentially. And, oh sorry, and the number of fixed broadband, if you zoom in, actually has declined. They have never exceeded more than 2% actually. So it's, so yeah, if, if you hear about startups in Indonesia, well, but they will be likely very concentrated in Jakarta, Bandung, and Bali. Oh yeah. And number of internet users and penetration by region, so again, we have uh, 27 province, um, 500 municipalities, and you can see it's very unevenly distributed. So uh, I'm making a case of libraries in Indonesia. I, um, I think in my um, abstract, I spoke about libraries and design, but I think I will, in the interest of time, I'll just uh, uh, compress it to only libraries. Um, this is the mapping of libraries in Indonesia available from the recent uh, mapping project by the National Library. Again, you will see the discrepancies and uh, well, it's not really that accurate. I mean, if you zoom in, you will see some libraries that are not really libraries. And um, the issue is, of course, data uh, collection in Indonesia is very, very difficult. <laughs> this is just from one source. National Library themselves. You will see October and December 2015, they are only 25, and then suddenly in July 2016, it's jump up. <laughs> what happened, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you look at it, then uh, you will see that the highest number is in school libraries. So uh, the average public libraries is only about what, um, 1,500, 2,500, and um, well, if you look again into the publications, the number again give you very, very funny numbers. But the weird thing is, of course, the number of certified librarians are only 2,500 to 3,500. So where are the workforce, right? Again, why the difficulties in getting accurate data? Um, of course, data is never accurate, but there's also the issue of loose categories. Um, um, this can be listed as a library under government procurement. <laughs> You know, because when you have to um, spend your budget, <laughs> and um, we also have uh, lots of this is um, 
this is uh, the photocopier in, near my university. There are lots of photocopy photocopiers uh, near universities and schools in Indonesia. We photocopy like crazy and sell them for cheaply because um, the, 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 the required textbooks, uh, English textbooks, are way beyond our budget. And um, of course, there are lots of independent initiatives, um, opening up of libraries uh, here and there. It's kind of like um, almost a favorite among NGOs and funders to open up libraries because um, yeah, it looks good. It's almost um, you know apolitical. It's almost uh, doesn't have any political impact. Uh, it's making people smart, right? But the issue is always maintenance. There is very uh, there's a there's just a lack of. Um, uh, Evaluation in after how um, in the sustainability, so there's a high rate of um, uh, failure. <laughs> and in terms of government institutions, um, this is uh, from Ismail Fami. He is one of uh, um, a consultant of National Library, recently recruited, talking about just the institutions, the so, so formal institutions, libraries. So there are various of them, and they are unintegrated in terms of SEO it's also quite bad so it's very difficult for you to just detect them from Google definitely not going to turn out so um, he's designing this uh, tools called OneSearch it's relying on uh, open archive initiatives um, uh, protocol for metadata harvesting so for all we have lots of libraries using different um, they have different cataloging system and they will the, the one search will detect them and you can find them in here sorry so one search the ID I'm not advertising but <laughs> I'm just showing about so the interesting bit is um, yeah so it's it's also very quite easy for uh, libraries in Asia to register for them, and this is how you uh, the 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 way to do do it. And because a lot of uh, libraries in Indonesia are do not have internet connectivity, if you are offline, you can also upload it uh, and send it to the Indonesia One Search. So that's one good initiative. But the caveat is you have to be legally registered. Whereas again, if you look to the previous slide, you know, the legal definition is very, very slippery here. And, um, there's this, uh, so if this is a library, but this is an independent initiative, not legally registered, but again, so, so you have that sort of ethical questionings uh, in here. And um, I don't know where you have heard about this, but last year we had quite, um, yeah, a bit of a red scare. Um, and also uh, Indonesia in 65-66 had a quite a brutal killing. So more, uh, at least 500,000 uh, people killed in uh, communist uh, yeah, murder, uh, massacre. Um, it's subject of a famous documentary, uh, The Act of Killing. So last year, um, the uh, the government for the first time initiated this symposium supported by the government to talk about the issues of um, 65 but there were lots of um, forces on the ground um, various forces I mean you, you can't even um, point fingers because there are so, the bloods are splattered all over many hands and um, yeah you have uh, military police um, thugs coming in and um, taking up the books and this is a photo of my friend in publishing who suddenly had his books were, were returned from the bookshops because the bookshops are afraid of being uh, of having the military coming in <laughs> and checking up which ha happened so again, that issue again, what, what is the consequences of making things open and visible? And how do we protect them? And this is another interesting initiative, op open source initiative, uh, 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 library management system, open source library management systems, which, which I also use in our library. Um, it's quite interesting because you don't really find many uh, library management 
open source library management systems in the world. There are, the famous one is Koha, uh, but Slings is interesting because it caters to a number of languages as well. So there are a number of contributors, which I think uh, this issue is rather neglected in, in, in the English-speaking uh, open source uh, library management systems. Um, it's, uh, there are quite a number of, um, of course, bugs and blah, blah, but uh, yeah, they, um, and they are, they are still, although they have lots of uh, contributors, they, and they, this software mm -hmm. is also deployed by, used by so many libraries in Indonesia. And I think also in Brazil, some, and if you see the languages, then you can get the idea where they have been used. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it seems like uh, it's a pity that it, not many people know it because it's quite user friendly. Um, and they they are next this this November will be their um, their 10th anniversary. Anyway, it's not been it's not uh, it's been used in library uh, government department. Uh, Sometimes people uh, even get enterpri enterprising ideas and package it and you know s try to sell it as vendors and and then the slim developers get angry because it, you know this is uh, this are not something that uh, you are supposed to sell you can download blah blah, blah. so it's quite a dynamic dynamic thing um, happening and it's been deployed as well as in Mission Visual Archive so um, so yeah uh, it connects various uh, various disciplines I can say but the issue is again it still requires some sort of techni uh, technical knowledge so this is an example of Indonesian street art database um, initially they tried using it but maybe because um, Indonesia has a lot uh, maybe because we have uh, lots of pirated software so, <laughs> so there are lots of uh, people using photoshop freely um, and happily and uh, th th that sort of uh, makes people get very distracted towards that uh, and uh, you don't get much visibility in this more um, less graphic uh, <coughs> software unfortunately i mean um, this is just uh, very anecdotal but i feel that i find more people more <coughs> apt in in using Photoshop, Illustrator than say in word processor even. So that again, um, now because they, they, they can't use it and now they st started using Instagram, which is in a way, well, uh, it's quite interesting uh, analogy between street art and of course uh, um, Instagram, social media. So that's Slim's next release, version nine, scheduled this November. Um, anniversary of their first release, but of course the issue again, we come back again to the macro issues if we don't know, if it's not usable, if we don't know the cultural context, the social political context, then it's very difficult. So for example, uh, lots of libraries in Indonesia in um, remote areas, they are uh, mo mo most library workers in Indonesia are women, and yet uh, <laughs> information technology uh, education um, very few women are in that field so that also coupled that with the fact that we are almost 90 percent Muslim so that also makes um, things very difficult uh, when you know lots of tech uh, communities work late till night whereas with a lot of Muslim women the norms are kind of prohibit you to do that so I'm not stereotyping, of course, but there are that sort of norms that happen in society. Um, yeah, so the infrastructural gap and the policy taxation and law. Um, oh yeah, the regarding taxation, the issue with Indonesian book. So if you look into Indonesian book production, uh, it's very, very low regionally, compared even to Vietnam, uh, Thailand, Philippines, because, um, well, various factors, of course, the infrastructure issues, logistics, uh, come into play, but there's also this taxation issue, which we have uh, for long tried to argue for, but never really make it to the government. But uh, the tax for books, um, you are taxed quite highly. I forgot how many percent, but and you have to apply for each book, except if your book is textbook or religious textbooks. <laughs> so you can imagine the the the, the frustration. 
so that's my presentation uh, thank you so much I'm happy to answer questions and of course yeah whatever thank you Uh, I haven't done research on how many people uh, have known about open source, but in terms of people, if we just limit it to the people graduating from engineering, for example, that's yeah very small. So yeah, so uh, so, so 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 that's one one uh, limitation to it, but. Um, so most, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know the number for that one, yeah. But for the, if we just take the example of Slim's community, um, the <coughs> catalogs themselves, if you just see the, one that, the ones that are registered that they managed to find, that's already about 3,000 3, uh, catalogs being used in Indonesia. So that's not a really bad number, uh, considering that they are also doing this, um, yeah, without, 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 without any funding or anything. Yeah. Yeah? So you mentioned you were a library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about the members? What kind of? Can you talk a bit about the profile? Oh, the um, <coughs> my library because it's um, a small library. Um, the members are only about 1,400-ish. Um, in terms of demography, mostly are uh, work, working people um, 18 to 35. But at the same time, that's the biggest bulge. But you also see uh, non-members who come by and read. and, uh, and uh, Because we also run a number of events like um, Farmers market, the book discussion, film discussions. Yeah. Normally, what are the factors that drive them to want to pick up membership? Um, the difficult uh, in Singapore, there are lots of libraries, very good libraries. I am very thankful for it. Uh, but in in Indonesia, the again the issues of access of information is actually quite difficult. I mean, I know we say that there's Google now, but for information in your own language, that's another issue entirely. And also because books in Indonesia disappear quite quickly from bookshelves, uh, because um, not because um, uh, because production is low. We normally produce less than 1,000 books per publisher for title. And if they don't sell well in bookstores, but by three months, they are usually get ousted. Yeah. So, getting books that you require and they were popular just three years ago, say, that can be difficult. So that makes uh, uh, that makes it, that there's a demand for it. The public libraries in Indonesia, again, cannot be compared to here. So yeah. Uh, I, I guess. You yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there is subscription fee. We make it, uh, we make it uh, low, uh, fifty thousand rupiah a year. So that's about five dollars a year. But um, the the system is a bit like book rental, rather than uh, rather than um, f really free books. So. I, in Singapore, we have Sunny Bookshop, I think, if you know about So basically, you pay, pay per use. Like, if you borrow a book, you borrow, uh, you pay 6,000 rupiah, which is about 60 cents. And that's for two weeks. So yeah, that's how we try to uh, kind of compensate for it. It's not enough. We also do a number of... Um, that's why we also do co-working. But yeah. Would you 
esta the issues is is logistic an issue like uh, uh, books when they come back in yeah. Oh, well, definitely. <laughs> but I guess you have to sort of let it. Uh, that's a risk that comes with uh, opening your your material to public, and that's why we are also considering of developing the uh, digitalizing uh, digitizing our collections. But yeah, we are still. Of course, there are lots of gray areas there. The copyright, the blah blah. So yeah, we have to be a bit careful with that. With <laughs> the book production, mm. isn't it, like if I think about other content production in areas which have traditionally were not well served, like, mm. like well in, in places like in Brazil uh, or in in, uh, in India or in maybe yep. even in, in Africa, when they make movies, when they make music, there is a really strong concert culture, which is kind of emerged by itself and for the market but with the digital technologies where people could afford camera and a PC to be able to build a film studio mm. and then make a production and then sell it and uh, well the quality of the result is questionable but well mm. local local people really fell in love with that type yeah. of uh, content and they yeah. consume it and then there's economy yeah, yeah. built by itself through this digital means of production. So I could imagine something like this happening with books as well, mm. but I'm not sure how, well, actually books are produced, whether this is a digital process mm. or, or if not. Mm. So shouldn't it be possible, well, given it's popular medium enough, so people mm. get hooked up for great books, mm. it should be possible to produce them digitally, even not print them, so mm. don't get approval, mm. then get some kind of really, really cheap Chinese e-book that mm. is distributed mm. for this subscription, mm -hmm. which could form the same market. There are a number of some, uh, some initiatives like uh, that uh, they are developing not only in Asia and I think I also see it in Singapore and I think various countries but yeah uh, we just haven't seen um, them scale up that big and I think we are yeah, just experimenting which format and also because uh, of course the issue is um, if we develop another app again will they why would uh, we have to ask why should they download it and blah, blah, blah. so yeah so uh, I'm yeah uh, it's something that is definitely uh, I keep at the back of my mind but yeah mm -hmm. that's great what you're doing is great thank you <laughs> thank you yeah, following that train of thought is there any translation program in place um, automated or by humans Mostly still by humans. Um, I don't know whether we have uh, tapped into um, the sort of what Google is developing. But um, only recently, I think, Indonesian government uh, really allocated resources for translation, for example, uh, compared to South America, which for a long time has dedicated uh, a lot of resources in translating their work. And that's why we know a lot about uh, South American literature, for example. Um, Indonesia, I mean, uh, the, the issue is uh, if crude measurement is, uh, <coughs> we don't have any Indonesian author in novelist or, you know, except for perhaps recently Eka Kurniawan. Uh, but yeah, so only recently that we have this uh, more proactive, um, proactive, um, I don't know, uh, by government and even corporation too, to see that, yes, we need to translate this and, uh, and allocate more serious resources but yeah only in the past probably five years well it feels like this education thing becoming counterculture so it feels like you're you know informational terrorist or something <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous it's just about knowledge that the history but then it somehow is. we can make meaning well how do you transfer knowledge yeah yeah the thing is, um, I don't know, I mean, this is, Indonesia is quite unique in the sense that we did have that, um, 
the 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 the, the ban on, for example, Marxism, Leninism, communism thing is still legally enforced, for example. But um, um, of, and of course the mass killings is I think is a scale that is uh, quite difficult to match in the world. Uh, so that it is quite unique in that sense. But I don't know whether this sort of situation will just be limited to Indonesia. I mean, we know of course the the state of the internet these days, and and we also know about what happened in the US. And yeah, so um, um, and the the level of uh, the thing um, we were debating about. Um, you know, uh, what's stopping design or technology uh, from being applied. In my experience, I, I have the advantage of um, being able to kind of self-taught myself in design and, and web development. But and having that amateurist uh, knowledge about how to speak on both sides give a great advantage. But if, again, if I try to speak to just even my friends in design and technology, it really requires a lot of communication. Yeah, and yeah, and I personally think that's why we have to uh, um, put more uh, work with different disciplines as well and different areas, definitely. Yeah. Great uh, final comment for design and art and community. I think you actually summarize what you're trying to do here and try to establish common ground with all the talk about in this Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.